a new minor version of Proxmox VE has just been released, and if you go to Proxmox downloads, you will see that from now on, the available version is version 9.1. And I know many sysadmins and home lovers have been waiting for this release, because <laughs> there is an unwritten rule that you should never install a point zero release, yes? And I get it. But now we passed that point, so let's have a look what's new in Proxmox 9.1. This is their official release document. If you go to Proxmox Wiki Roadmap, we can see the release history. And from 19th November, we've got Proxmox 9.1. And on this tab, you can see it running on my mini PC, where I installed it just to play with it. You might already see some hints that <laughs> this is different. You can see those bulk actions, which let you perform changes for many LXCs and VMs at the same time. And if we go to, to the storage option where you keep your uh, templates, you can see that now you can pull from OCI registry, which is a huge change. But let's go back from uh, to the beginning, okay? Let's go back to this release document and let's have a look. What's changed exactly? We can see that it's still, you know, based on Debian Trixie, which is Debian 13, but from now on it's version 13.2. So 13.2 is also more stable version of Debian, underlying operating system for Proxmox itself. Then we have a new kernel, it's 6.17.2-1, whereas the Proxmox V9.0 was based on 6.14 version. 6.14.8, if I remember right. The QEMU has also newer minor version, is now 10.1, it used to be 10.0. LXC is just minor slight point release, uh, it's 6.05 now, it used to be 6.04. ZFS also went from 2.33 to 2.234, sorry. And the self squid I believe it's the same. But now let's have a look at the highlights. You can see that you can now create LXC containers, uh, Linux containers, from OCI images which is Open Container Initiative, which is huge, guys, because you can think of that OCI uh, registry as any Docker image that you can pull from that registry and you can run it the same way you run LXC container, which means you don't have to run Docker on top of like LXC on, or, or on top of VM, which is recommended anyways, but you can now run any Docker container directly here as its own entity. Which means if I go here, and you still have the templates, yes, the like standard templates for Linux containers, but you can now pull from OCI registry. You can just specify the path to that registry, to the tag, usually it's the latest, but it doesn't have to be, and Proxmox will run it as if you run Linux container, LXC container. And I can see huge potential here and a great convenience, especially for applications like uh, Plex or Home Assistant, but honestly I haven't played with it enough yet, so I think I will make a dedicated video just about those OCI images. I think it's really, really cool that we have now this option but I also think it deserves separate video. So we will revisit it shortly, I guess. Let's go back to the official document then. Ah, worth to mention, it's technology preview. So it's kind of like a beta, you know, it, it, not everything might work, but that's what I want to test. If we go to the other point though, we can see support for TPM state in QCAU, I don't know how it's pronounced, QCAU2. But basically, the TPM is the little file you have to add. Like when we installed Windows 11, for example, it requires TPM, which is Trusted Platform Module. And what it means, this TPM can now be stored in this format. I mean, the state of this file can be stored here. So if you take a snapshot of your VMs over network file system, for example, from now on, you will be able to also save the state of that TPM file, which means, for example, for Windows 11, let's say, it should be easier, it should be more portable simply. It is a great convenience, and I think over time it might even get more and more significant. Next, we've got a fine grain control for nested virtualization for VMs. And what it means, simply, if you, if you are like me and you always use host vCPU uh, type for your, uh, for your processor, that doesn't change anything. But for everybody who chooses virtual CPU, you can now add that flag to allow nested virtualization. So for all people that can't use host vCPU because of, let's say, live migrations, maybe that's important for them, you still will be able to enable nested virtualization flag for your vCPU, which is great. And you know, I don't want to read everything for you, but we can see the highlights, kernel 6.17, new stable default, and the upgrade-wise, if you are on uh, Proxmox 8.4, you should follow this document. They provided the link, upgrade from 8 to 9. And if you are already on Proxmox 9.0, then it's super easy because you simply just run apt update and then apt dist upgrade. And then 
to see the new version, you might simply open a new window because you know your browser, your browser still remembers the old file. So if you open a new window, you will see you are on Proxmox 9.1. And if we go further to changelog overview, you can see some enhancements to, to GUI. That uh, bulk action, I already <laughs> mentioned that. You can see this button is now called bulk action. Bulk start, shutdown or suspend. So we can take multiple LXCs or VMs and run this operation on multiple items at the same time. Just let's go quickly through it. I don't want to miss anything important here. And to be honest, the GUI is not even that important. Let's move to virtual machines. And we can see again that support for the TPM state in the QQ2 format. So we can now send the state of that file to our NFS share as a snapshot. And we can see that this nested word is a flag that we can add to our vCPU to automatically resolve that vendor-specific virtualization flag, which is also a great addition. From now on, we have Intel Trusted Domain Extensions enabled, or supported, I should say. And another one uh, worth mentioning is this one for PCI pass I would say, because from now on, you have that driver option where you can point to a specific VFIO driver. And this is also something I want to revisit. I mean, we had a video about the GPU pass-through on Intel N100, where I had to use custom ROM. I have some ideas already because of that little feature, but <laughs> again, I have to play with it first, and I will let you guys know. And if we scroll down further and further, the containers, <laughs> that's the huge one, for me at least, create LXC containers directly from Open Container Initiative, <laughs> which basically means Proxmox can now pull Docker container and run it as if you run LXC container. But as I said, that's something for me to test separately. And as you can see, the LXC version itself is also updated to version 6.05. No idea what they mean saying support Ubuntu 26.04. <laughs> maybe I'm stupid, but I don't think there is anything like that yet for at least another half a year. But maybe it's something else they mean by saying that. Or maybe it's typo, I don't know. And some other smaller changes and also security improvements, etc. You can see they fixed loads and loads of issues. So I think, guys, now it's really a good time to have a look, download, have a go, maybe in test environment if you have one, because now there is not really an excuse to not go for Proxmox 9 if you are still on 8.4 version. That's all from me, so just short video, hope it helps, thank you for watching.